Hi everybody, good evening. Uh, my name is Alan and on behalf of the crew I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. And you know, it was interesting, when I was driving over here I just was feeling so much love within me for, for really no reason, just, just overflowing with an internal experience of love. And I just felt so you know, blessed and honored to be one alive and to be able to be coming in with all the extraordinary people to be doing this show. And, and to be getting, especially over this week, so much feedback and response from, from people all over the country about how, how the, sh you know, the Bridging Heaven and Earth show is really affecting them. And I mean, just on behalf of the crew, I mean, we're just so pleased that, that all the time and energy we put into the show is really affecting so many people in such a positive way. Actually, I got a call today from somebody who said he's normally, he's drawn to the darkness. And, but when he watches the show, he just, he's really pulled into the love and the light of this show. And, and I know for the next 58, 60 minutes, there's just going to be a lot of love and beauty and harmony displayed on this show. We have with us an old friend, Sarah, who's been uh, with us before, Sarah West, who's a mystic poet. She's a visionary. She's an angelic transmitter. And her vibration and her experience that if you just relax and, f and fold into tonight, you'll really feel that connectedness and that, that love that she is, wants to share and her life is about sharing. And we also have a new friend with us. It just worked out. We're so excited to have her, uh, Charlo Stewart, who's a, a teacher and a, a, feng, a feng, I knew I was going to say it wrong, a feng, feng shui uh, consultant and teacher. And she uses the, the elements and, and the, uh, the things about your life and about your home to bring more harmony and more love into, into every day and every breath of your life. And she's just a delightful and inspiring human being. So, you know, we're just really delighted to have Sarah and Charlo with us. And as somebody said, it's going to be a show of beauties and the beast, and I think we all know what they were saying. But we'll proceed on, and I think if you just relax for with us for the next little while you'll really have an extraordinary experience so to help us do that please join me in a short meditation just relax if you know how to meditate do that meditation technique if not try to follow your breath or just just try to relax clear your mind follow your breath and just stay with me for a little while okay thank you Thank you. So please, just, just be open to the love that's really going to be available to all of us tonight. So we're going to start with uh, Sarah West doing her first set, uh, Sound of Peace. And these are all the, all the songs that you'll hear tonight and all the pieces you'll hear by Sarah were written by her and are from her album, Sacred Pyramid. So whenever you're ready, Sarah, please take her away.
Wow, thank you, Sarah. That was beautiful. So I'm here with Charlo. Welcome. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, just beautiful. I can just feel it all through my heart and soul. Just so, lovely. So for people who are unfamiliar with feng shui, did I, did I get it right that you time? You got it right. <laughs> I knew I'd get it right part of the time, but not right. Uh, why don't you just give people who are not so familiar with a little history of it all and right. how it came to be and what its intention is and all? Okay. I was, as I was driving here, I was thinking it's a, the title of the show was really perfect because bridging heaven and earth. And in feng shui, they believe there are two influences, major influences, heaven and earth, and man stands between the two. And it's, it's, it just goes right with the title of the show. Feng shui is an ancient Chinese art science that's about 4,000 years old. And it started way out in the rural times when people really lived very close to nature and watched the cycles, understood what was happening, were very obviously environmentally um, related, watched the rivers, watched the seasons, watched the stars, all of these things, and started noticing the influence that they have on us and that all things follow into cycles. And so feng shui, what it does is takes these, these elements, wind and water, which is what feng shui means, the two strongest natural forces, and charts them and can make predictions about what's going to happen to us. So then once people started building buildings on Earth, we started changing the landscape. And buildings have an energy in them. And it's very important that when we have this energy come in, we want the energy to come in through the building slowly, move all the way through the building, not get st stuck in one place, not be rushing through. And when this energy moves through, we have balance. And when we have balance, we have harmony. Mm -hmm. And then when we have harmony, we have the opportunity to become the best people that we can become. Mm -hmm. So, and, and how did you get involved with it? I'm an interior designer. As and for a long time. For quite a while. Right, right. And I um, started hearing about feng shui and thought, well, this is interesting. You know, I can mm. see that there, there are real principles in interior design, and I was curious how the two would come together. So if just bringing they did. like the spiritual element into design That's and into right. beauty into your That's home. That's right. Okay. That's right. And if we have this balance, then it, then good things start happening, and I think mm. it's it's feng shui is a wonderful force for the world because it improves everybody individually. So when I feel good and can be the best I can, the people that I come into contact with benefit from it, then they benefit, and on it goes. Right. Kind of like the pebble in a pond. Right, and yeah, idea. like a domino. Right. Just, yeah. Right. right. So in other words. I mean, even if you don't come in contact, you're just vibrating at a more harmonious right. and more beautiful and right. balanced level. Right. And, that, and that in itself, although we don't usually recognize that subtlety, kind of It does. Dominoes People out. understand right. it. They, they feel see it. it. Right. They really feel right. it. That's right. 
And so, and you have a whole practice doing that. So, yes. And we were we talking do. when we first met at lunch how more and more people e are coming. They are, into and it's it it's and really interesting because everybody that I do a consultation for, they get some benefit from it, and people notice it, and so other people start, and we hear about it on TV now, and mm -hmm. in newspaper, and there's a magazine out dedicated to feng shui, and it's really exciting. People really are hearing about it now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when somebody comes to you for a consultation, say, uh, how, what do you first do? What is your experience of that? I, I need to be at the site, and I really look at the environment, this large environment. Fun as I said earlier, environment is extremely important, and so you take into consideration what's around there, what's the weather like. When we, when we have good energy, there are healthy plants around, there's warm sun, gentle breezes. Santa Barbara, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, here we are, this beautiful place, and you can tell that the energy is good. So that's, that's really so important, what surrounds us energy-wise. So I look around the area, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I look at the neighborhood, I look at where the streets are, because in c modern day, we don't have, you know, most of us don't live on a river, we have streets. Mm -hmm. And so the streets become rivers, and that becomes a way that energy is carried. And so I look at that. And then I look at the, the building itself and start analyzing that and the way that the energy moves through and I take into consideration. And so how do you see it? So you're on a street and there are certain roads and so what is the process you go through? Is it something you just feel or is it more that certain roads going north and south or east and west? Or it's, it's the way that, not so much the direction that's important, it's the way, the amount of traffic that's on a road, whether it's straight or curving, curving roads are better. I look at a building and see if a road is coming straight at the building. That's not particularly good because mm -hmm. energy is hitting that building. Mm -hmm. Um, I look at where the landscaping is, how that is, if there are um, blocks in front of the doors, mm -hmm. the entrance doors, that kind of thing. I take into consideration the foliage that's around. We don't want dead trees and dead vegetation and mm -hmm. unmowed lawns and that kind of thing. I so better not take you to my house. I say. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Clean God. Clean up your feng shui. Oh my God. I got a feng shui nightmare. <laughs> And so that, I look at that. Then inside, you look at such things as, is there clutter? And, you know, clutter is, is stagnating. It's frustrating to us because we look, you know, when you have a pile of stuff, like my kitchen counter. How about spider webs? Spider webs are good? Depends what's written in the spider web. Well, yeah, I got everything that written because <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, oh, okay, well. Uh, so you don't want to come so, over to visit my house? Sure. No, no. Sure. Sure. no I'm sure. Be, no, actually, I live in a very beautiful place. And it's in the woods near the Botanic Garden. That would that yeah, be it's great. Very beautiful. That's yeah. good. So, so you're taking all the factors that are affecting the energy or the vibration right. of, the pers of a human being moving in this right. space from outside right. to the building itself to the inside right. to the clutter to the spiders to where the right. beds are right. and determining if Where the bathrooms are, you don't want to open your front door right into the crapper because that's <laughs> that's right. You don't. Right. You don't. I, I've, you, yes. I, somebody you, told me that. <laughs> My house doesn't, so it's not. <laughs> but uh, so I mean, all these factors, and these are all things that you've learned, and and as you gain experience, you see how changing them I, affects everything. It does. Uh -huh. It really does. And they talk. Also, you consider the yin and yang. Of, which of, is for wh explain for people. Okay, that. yin is the feminine. It's the dark. It's the it's the non-moving. The yang is the energy, the the sun. It's the moving. It's the uh, so we have these two opposing forces, and they need to be balanced. You can't have all all yang. If you're in a room that has sunlight just constantly streaming in, you're going to get headaches. You're going to be anxious. You're going to be nervous. You're going to be um, cantankerous, that's too young. Mm -hmm. The opposite is true. If you're in a room that's just dark, the air isn't moving, you get depressed, you get, you know, 
moody, mm. those kinds of things. So you need a balance of those things. Mm. And so in a building, you have what are called the yang rooms, which would be your living room, mm -hmm. the entry, the maybe the kitchen, maybe the family room, mm. those kinds of things. The yin rooms obviously would be bedrooms mm -hmm. because those are the private parts. The entries in a building are real important. Right. You know, how you come in and, mm -hmm. and what you meet and what you said. What, what do you see, first of all? Do you, see, do you see clutter? Do you see the kitchen? Do you see a welcoming space where you can come in and relax and make the transition from your, you know, your busy outdoor life to your private life? So the layout is important. So feng shui takes an environment, it takes in the building, it takes in the individual people that either are living or working there. Would some people like be more, need more yin and yang or more I of something so. than another? So, I, definitely. So, so your recommendations would be different for a different type of people? That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. And there are certain, in feng shui, we divide people into eight broad categories. And these categories have certain characteristics that um, generally fall through, follow through, whether it's personality, health, um, and we know directions that are good for people to face if they need to have energy or be creative or to rest well. And so that's why the bed is very important because we spend so much time there. So we want mm. our bed in a good, good location that benefits us. Mm and takes advantage of the room and yet takes good advantage of our directions. Are there any like specific uh, singular types of advices like the, the bed, sh your he the head of the bed should be facing north, south, not near not the bathroom, not out the window, you know. <laughs> Gen generally you don't want, if there's, a, if there's a door, you don't want your feet facing the door because that's what's called the, you know, carrying you out the last time, so you don't oh, want that. Oh, and <laughs> Try to think how my bed is now. It's like <laughs> That's not good. That's not really good. And you um, probably don't want your head where there's a lot of wind going by it because mm -hmm. that's carrying that chi past you too fast. Wait, say the that one again. The wind, you know, you don't, so you don't want your head between a door and a window so that energy is rushing past your head while you're trying to rest. I see. Uh -huh. so, because that would be disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, Even with the doors closed, just because they're portals well, of energy more of the time. Well, if they're closed, then that changes it. I see. That, that's better. Uh -huh. um, probably don't want your bed right under a window because the same thing, the energy coming in over you is probably not real good. Mm -hmm. um, as far as directions, that's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. So you can't just say generally everybody should point north. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily right, you know, good. I think maybe we'll take a break now and come back and get mm -hmm. into it again. But uh, let's do, uh, Sarah's going to do her second number, and it's called Healing Prayer from the Sea of Galilee. And this again was written by Sarah, and it's from her album Sacred Pyramids. So whenever we're ready with Sarah, please, thank you. Prayer was written in the Sea of Galilee. I sat upon a rock, and Christ came to me. And she said, Hello. Behold you, lady. The light is upon you. I see you, and I recognize you. Peace, welcome unto the light, the hall, the hall of forever. You are among many now who see. Peace comes as you gather together. Peace comes as you see and recognize each other. Peace comes as you love and allow each other's differences. 
and know that you are all one. Recognize, dear ones, that you are all of the magnitude that you seek. Recognize each other's light. Reconcile your differences. Leave behind your lack and walk on anew. Strengthened by the knowledge of your wholeness. Already existing, walk on with the majesty that is light, galactic in your awareness, expansive in your stature, humble in your shedding of limitation. Surrender, beloved. See the light which you are, and don't be ashamed to be the serenity that you are. Be bold in your conviction for peace, resonating in joy, acceptance, radiating love. Behold. Become Christ, lady, love. Become eternity, loving, now, living, now. Beloved, I seek you, see me, behold me, seeking you. Humble I am. Loving you, humble I am, being at peace with you. I am home, lady, with you. You are home, lady. I love you. Love me as I love you. Receive me because of boundless dimensions. Loving you, I am. Loving you, I exist. Hold me, let him go. Hold me, free all. I am your. Loving all. I am your consciousness. Loving all. Wow, thank you, Sarah. So we're back on the set with Charlo. Why don't you, you know, give some some feel for like how this has changed people's lives. When you come into a house or in your house, or you can come into mine, but you'd have to look. <laughs> Demolish crew, demolish, no. Uh, so how, how do people experience the change? And when you come in, you, you know, so you move things around. So just like, what would you do in a house? You'd move this, this you know, just give a few. Okay. Um, you've asked two questions. Which do you want first? The results oh. or? <laughs> I'll tell some results. Right, okay. Um, I had, I did, um, a, a house for a young woman who was married and had two small children and, and her two children had disagreements, you know, as kids do. Right. And her husband was very, you know, this is, this is not anything we want to do. We don't want to do this. She said, let me do it. Just let me do it. So she did. And in other words, call you in and do, do, feng do the feng shui the for the house. Right. And um, I checked with her a month later and she said, my husband is so much nicer to me than he used to be. But it, he's not she living said, in the house anymore. He, no. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the further She's, away, the better. No. She said one day he took off for work. And, and never came, and, no. No, no. <laughs> no. He did come back. Right, he right, came back. Right. A nicer an, person. An, he did. An hour later said, I'm not going into work 
pick up the kids, let's go to, you know, wherever, Magic Mountain, Disneyland really? for the day. And this was right and after this you? this is right after, That's within a fantastic. month of after she did it. And her children aren't, you know, disagreeing as much and wow. that kind of thing. I had another client that they just moved into a new house and her son wasn't sleeping well. And she said before they'd moved to this house, he was sleeping through and all this. Now he had to have the light on and what mm -hmm. have you. So we changed his bed. I said, don't tell him why, just, just mm -hmm. do it. And the first night, the light was out. He slept fine, and, mm. and that was great. Wow. I did um, another woman who, who works for mor does mortgages and just did her one cubicle in this great big building. And ordinarily, she does seven or eight a month. This last month, she did 16. So and you've she's never, changed the push pins I, on the wall? Or? Well, <laughs> I mean, these I, things. I, well, what I did, we changed her cubicle. She had somebody who could, she was willing to change, oh, so see. we got a better location for uh -huh. her. Right. And then the direction that she was facing and the layout of the, the offices and the other that were already didn't there. Go postal, though, no, right? no, no, no. The other person's fine. fine. Okay. And right. so that that's right. that was really good. So do you find like people uh, really experiencing more love in their lives and more connection to Yes. Yes. To just feeling it, more in harmony. They feel more in harmony. And uh -huh. when they feel that their personal relationships become better. Mm -hmm. Their, you know, their friendships are improved. Sometimes health gets better because if we're not, if we're not unbalanced and mm -hmm. living in places in that disease, aren't, right. then, then, you know, mm -hmm. our health improves. Mm -hmm. And I found since I've been doing this myself, I don't get as many colds. I don't get the flu like no. I normally well, do. do. You, have to, you said today and, that we were talking earlier that you, some, I mean, do you have to change the house around? Like you, every six months or so, because there are different cycles that go through. There's a 20-year basically and an annual that goes through, and those are the two main cycles that I deal with. And so the 20 years stays in for a long time. It'll be until 2003, mm -hmm. but the annual should be changed every February. And by this doesn't mean major moving of furniture. It may mean putting a a plant here that wasn't here a year ago. And it may mean. So, do you walk in and just feel the energy? I mean, no, there, this is this is really very it's mathematical. Like sci scientific. There. It's very scientific. So, what would cause, in the science of it, for you to walk into a house and say, you know, the, let's switch the red and the the orange? These are awful pretty roses tonight. They're beautiful. Say. They're beautiful. So, I mean, would you do? Would it be that specific, or it that? It can be. It can so be. So, how would you know? How would you experience uh, because it? Because they're. T uh, at the very beginning, I said there are cycles, right. and these cycles are predictive. And so we know when certain cycles go into a building that's sitting a certain way, that these the imbalances occur. Mm -hmm. And to right those imbalances, we use the five elements that you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And maybe plants. It mm -hmm. may be putting um, a piece of metal or a piece of earth somewhere, mm -hmm. and that that settles this unbalance and then there's there's harmony. Mm -hmm. So it's small things basically. Sometimes it's moving, you know, sofas so that the energy flow comes in mm -hmm. right. But it's not a lot of moving of furniture and you mm -hmm. don't do that every year. So it's generally year. not as gross after you get the basic no, framework right. set up and people's beds are facing the, the That's right way. Right. And, and then it's pretty, it's right. just small adjustments. Mm -hmm. It's like setting daylight savings time and standard time mm -hmm. about. So, I mean, did you study this for a long time? Did you, I mean, I'm I, still I get a, studying. Well, yeah, everybody is. Yes. But, I mean, did you, I mean, I, I can sense that you took a real, like, you know, My, you just had a real feel for it and a real skill for it, but I mean, are there like like years and years of training and stuff like yes. that? Yes, my master. I have a master, Mary, uh, master Larry Song, who's in Monterey Park, mm -hmm. and I've gone through training with him, and it's ongoing. Mm -hmm, right. And I go as often as I can. And as the more I learn about feng shui, the more I realize that there is to learn. Right. It's one of those yeah, kinds of things. It's not something like, well, I've got this yeah. all. I think I in almost anything, learning. the more you'll learn. If you're really learning and something that's worth learning. It's, it's just wonderful. Just like further up yep. and further in. Right, right, right. It's really exciting. So, I mean, do you find more and more people being open to it? It's yes. not just some, you know, things for, you know, Orientals or Asians. I don't right. know what the politically correct <laughs> I'm always like three politically corrects behind. So, <laughs> But it's non not just Non-Westerners. Non-Westerners. Right, no. But it's, 
it's, it's coming into it's like coming, Western It really is, because culture. when I first started three years ago, I'd say it, and people kind of glaze over like, uh huh, uh -huh. Right. you know, you're really, <laughs> right. really out there. You're and now the I see. cutting edge of the lunatic fridge. <laughs> right, right. And now it's, you know, feng shui. Oh, I've heard about that, uh -huh. but they may not know much about it, right. but at least it's in the vocabulary now. So, would, so you're an interior designer. Would you say your entire practice now went from, I mean, like five years ago, was it, you know, just coming in and picking the drapery and helping people right, pick right, you know, fabric, and right. now it's 100% feng shui? I'd say it's 95% really? feng shui, and I love it. That's fantastic. I, I, I just love this switch. And do you still pick and fabric? I still do. Oh, I still okay. do. I still have... Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and I have some clients that want me to do the, the remedies for them. Some clients do their own. Uh -huh. and so remedies I can meaning? Where to put that vase of flowers. Right. So, well, I mean, how would they know how to do it? Because they haven't studied. Because I tell them. Oh. When I meet with them, <laughs> when I meet with them, I tell them, you know, explain the whole thing. I right. take a long time and explain as much as they want to know about right. feng shui, and why I'm making recommendations, and the reason for it, and as much as they're interested in. And some people just want to say, just tell me what to do. Just do it and just, see how yeah, I feel. Yes, with it. Right. and then other people have lots of questions, you know, about the history of it and you know, what can I expect from this and how soon? That's usually the biggest question. How soon When am I going to notice feel a change? Right. And, and what is your answer? It varies. <laughs> That's what I would have thought, it, but I was hoping varies. you could. Some people, I personally have felt it sometimes in, within 48 hours. Um, I've had some clients that it's been a week, sometimes it's three months. If longer than three months goes by, and nothing has happened, then there needs to be more adjustment. I it, see. It so you would go quite, into the house and say I, it's not working yet. What right. more and we, subtle we work, needs to right, be worked on? Right. I see. I make now, house are, calls. Are, are more subtle, <laughs> would you say people who are more subtle to their environment are more subtle to the, the feng shui? I think so. Feng shui. F -F <laughs> I Let's think give it so. a nickname. I, thi I think so, and I think that, I say that, but that's not true, because um, my husband doesn't always know when I've changed things, and he, he I can see the difference in him when the can new he, year can starts. Can he feel the difference? He feels he the does. difference. And will he say to you, did, you know, did you do something? Yes, he will. By now, and I he do his realizes. Office. I do his office. So even if he doesn't know that a new plant has arrived right. necessarily, the, the vibration of it or how he, can, he feels in the environment right. will definitely change. Yes, it does. Wow, it that's really fantastic. does. So, if, if, if you could like, you know, like give a, a, a like a, a minute or a 30 second uh, sense of like why you think that it would be important for people to like really be more aware of their environment and bring uh, feng shui into their life or the, or the, you know, just the idea of it, kind of. I think because it gi it gives people the opportunity to be the best they can, to improve their their relationships, their relationship with their maker, right. with the people they live with. There's a respect for the environment that's extremely important. Um, then, of course, it can help improve finances, which everybody's interested right. in. Health. It just, it just is, it's is a, a har general, harmonizing it's and a balancing. Har it is. It That's is. fantastic. All right, it I think is. we're ready for Sarah again. Uh, this is uh, Voice of the Angels, and it's again from Sarah's album, Sacred Pyramids. So whenever we're ready with Sarah, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Wow, that was fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. So we've been getting a lot of calls lately, and I, I just wanted to take this time to uh, please encourage everybody to, uh, to uh, check out the website. If you have any web access, check out our site at www.heaventoearth.com. That's Heaven to Earth, H-E-A-V-E-N-T-O-E-A-R-T-H. -E -E I think we show it during the, sh the show and, and also at the end. Uh, and uh, there's just some really nice things on there. It has all the guests listed. There's a way to contact us. There's question and answers that a lot of people called about. And I think it'll just, and we're starting to put pictures of the crew and, and flyers that we do every week and for every show. So I think you'll really get a nice experience out of it. So also we've been getting some feedback that uh, we had run this video, the illumination video by Ken Jenkins. Uh, over the first couple of seasons, and we haven't shown it uh, recently. So we've been getting some requests for it, and we thought we'd show it tonight. So uh, whenever they're ready in the control room, uh, the illumination video by Ken Jenkins. So I hope you like it. Thank you.
Well, I hope you liked it. Well, we're on the set now with Sarah. Hi, Sarah. That was hey, beautiful. Um, so, how did you get started, like, toning rather than, like, necessarily using words so much? Or, you know, how did you, you know, begin to do it without accompaniment in a way? I mean, how did, how did that happen for you? I think it definitely started with remembering what it was before we were in body. Hmm. Really remembering. So, when you were a really was, young girl yes. in this, at this time, this in, this, in this lifetime, oh, <laughs> now we can start speaking Hindi. The right words have been used. All right, go ahead, young lady. Uh, yeah, when I was, uh, actually when I was like, my mom was an opera singer, but I never really heard her sing. But I would go around and I would make these, <clears throat> these sounds and they were what I remember that was peaceful and it would bring peace in an unpeaceful environment. And, um, and um, I would listen to the operas, but it wasn't quite the right thing, because opera is too dense to me. It's, it's not very... It wasn't the right vibration it's like a so of it, a soap but it had the right voice, yeah, but it didn't have the right... Yeah, right, exactly. Uh -huh. And um, I actually used to sing um, in Latin when I was like six years old. I'd, do, I'd play the, the records of Carmina Burana, the famous operas. But, and so I sort of trained my voice with music that, uh -huh. you know, but what was composed came from, comes from another realm. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I mean, we've had a lot, you, as you know, we've had a lot of different people on the show. Would you consider it like, in a sense, channeling, just to use a word, or mm. just that you're a vehicle? I mean, how, mm, how, how would you describe, describe it? it? I don't use the word channeling, uh -huh. simply because it connotes that it's something other than the self, mm -hmm. other than what we are, and, mm -hmm. and people sort of think that it's, you know, separate. And mm -hmm. to me, it's, it's me being most of myself. It's me being whole. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I'm walking, and although the personality is expression too, and there's an aspect when I'm in my personality, at times I'm more whole. I can be in wholeness expressing that, mm -hmm. but not all the time. Mm -hmm. But I feel, but it's even challenging to stay aligned, to really listen, because I can even, you know, be distracted and not do the right note or hold mm -hmm. it for the right length of time mm -hmm. or do the right thing with my voice mm -hmm. because it, it's definitely, and, and I sort of... So it's almost like a, 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 a sounding meditation for you. Oh, and yeah. It, and it I obviously has a sense for myself and the people in the audience that it, it, it like brings people well, it's into a message. that state. It's a messenger and a message. It's like, to me, it's really divine knowledge coming through the instrument of the voice, of the sound. It's, it's beyond the mind, it's not words, it's a vibration, it's a presence, it's a consciousness that's brought through into this, into this world through this, this vehicle. So it's, it's like a sound current vibrating yeah. love in a way, yes. vibrating harmony. Yeah, I know, it's just so amazing. I mean, you speak to Charlo, or, I mean, just so many people come through, and it's like they all have their own mm -hmm. Way view of, doing of expressing it. that sincerity. Exactly, and that love. exactly. So, and you've traveled all over the world, the pyramids and the White House. You aren't an intern, though. We don't <laughs> 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 God forbid. No, so, I mean, you, you've done this toning all over, mm -hmm. and the response has been just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Do you find that when you do it in sacred sites, which the White House might not be one, but oh, when you I've do it at the, the pyramids and. And things like that. Do you sense a difference? And if you do it, not here, of course, because this is one of the highest places on earth. But do you sense that when you go mm. do it in the pyramids, that there's a mm. different experience coming within well, and without? Well, there's definitely a difference in, in location. There is. There is definitely a difference, and it's interesting. It, it, I've sung in like old cathedrals to ruin sacred sites and and to I've sung in the Capitol building in Washington DC where the, uh -huh. all the Senate things right. happen and I've sung in the post office in Santa Barbara it's one of my you favorite be places you know what it's one of my favorite like places postal, but there's definitely a different vibration that happens in different locations but it's like it's like there's something that wants to be spoken and and in that sense some you know I am an instrument and sometimes a channel for energies of a time or a moment or even a location that wants to heal something. Mm -hmm. It's like something very unique can come out sometimes. So, you know, we announced and we put graphics that this is the name of this song, but is it yeah. different every time? Yes. So it's yes. kind of like an ongoing, and you put it's just It's unique to, in each, each moment. moment. Each moment beckons a certain um, phrase or, or painting or 
you know, So every prayer, time somebody would hear prayer. you do any one of these songs from different. the album, I mean, the album is kind of like frozen in time in mm -hmm. a sense. But if you did it like on a, at a hundred concerts or a hundred sacred mm -hmm. sites, each time would be a little different. Right. There's interesting because there are certain melodies that come, like she was talking about seasons and mm -hmm. phases. There's certain melodies that just amaze me because they they will come until they're done. They will they will do their they will do their thing until sort of that phase is done and whatever that vibration was was complete mm -hmm. and these certain things will come up again and again because that message wants to be harnessed and expressed on the earth and delivered whether everyone hears it or not it still makes a change just mm -hmm. like she was talking about one person feng shui's their home or their self then it, the whole world is affected mm -hmm. so so as you spread that vibration mm -hmm. of harmony and balance in your way it's just like the dominoes are getting spread further out yeah. and it's just that vibration of love I mean you know it's exciting because Sarah was on the show before and I think I've mentioned it on some of the other shows if you've seen that you know the shows are being shown full on the internet now the the uh, the technology is not quite right there yet because it's a little jerky and things like that. But it's one of the shows this guy picked from Switzerland is Sarah's show. And it's so neat to be able to click on it and just see Sarah doing, you know, just doing her toning and stuff. It's just really fantastic. So, and, you know, I mean, I've been sending him all the rest of the show, so he's going to have, like, you know, 30 shows, and it's just so neat. And he's also picked one of your spots for a new page, that mm. Spirit Art page. Right, Spirit Art. Where he's Art. just taking certain segments rather than the whole oh. show. So, mm -hmm. see, I think that's tremendously exciting mm -hmm. for someone anywhere in the world can click on, you know, if they have an internet access, can click and see Sarah doing the toning. And isn't that, it's just, mm -hmm. it blows my mind. That, you know, we're just mm -hmm. so excited about that, you know. Mm -hmm. so, and so, I and you travel all over the world mm -hmm. just doing that. So, where's your next trip? Virginia, in a week. Really? Mm -hmm. next and so, you have week. a program? Yeah, I have three programs. It's called The Sound of God, the First and Second Seal. And it's a three day event in Charlottesville, Virginia on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And are you doing the whole thing yourself? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah, and I have a keyboardist named Shalel Octavia. Wow. Is, we've done work in front of thousands of people with at the Edgar Casey Center in Atlanta, at the well, Whole Life Edgar Expos. Casey's main headquarters is, is in, in Virginia, Virginia Beach. Beach. So is that I've where you are? many presentations there. It won't be there. It will be in Charlottesville. Oh, wow. Which is where Shalel lives, and it's a wonderful center. It's um, where, you know, Thomas Jefferson's college is and stuff like that. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, of course, I do it for my own healing. Right. I do it for my own sanity. Right. So... <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it gives me this great vehicle to to love with and, it, right. and, it and to receive me. love yeah it's just like that, yeah. that what cycle. I give I receive right mm -hmm. okay so I guess again you know these shows go so fast you know I just want to you know thank uh, Sarah and thank Charlo for coming and you know I hope you had as beautiful an experience as I did and if you have, you know, you want any information about where Sarah's going to be, her, her albums, her CDs, her poetry, you know, how to reach uh, Charlo for consultations, for information, you know, if she's teaching any classes, uh, please contact me at 805-687-2053. That's Alan at 805-687-2053. And I'd also really recommend that you check out the website and uh, it's just really extraordinary and you'll just see I mean this is the 63rd show and you'll just see all the guests and you know all this, the shows and the seasons so thanks again for coming good night God bless you please come again watch the show mm.